Welcome to KT Quick Reviews, where I play a game for about an hour or so and tell you about it. Wanting to change up my gaming experience, I decided to dip into a sim classic, Game Dev Tycoon. I was a massive supporter of this game when it originally was announced, even buying it before it came out on Steam. And oh boy did I play the heck out of it, doing little runs here and there just to live out my little pie-in-the-sky dreams of being a game dev. Though I can't honestly remember the last time I played, it couldn't have been that long, Nine years? That was the last time I played? Oh wow, okay yeah, let's go another round. Right off the bat, Game Dev Tycoon is, as the title says, a game development simulator with a few fun twists. I really don't know where to add this, so I'm gonna do it right here before I get into the actual meat of the review. The music in this game is a bop. If you need some good upbeat tunes to get you going, listen to the Game Dev Tycoon tracks. Okay, let's get on to the main thing. You first start off in a figurative 1980s in your garage making things like old text adventure PC games or ones for the G64. All the consoles, because they didn't have rights for the actual names, have funny parody ones. The Vony Play System, the TES, Gameling. They're all really goofy and very creative. So in creating your first game, it goes through three stages, each feature of the game either going to creative or technology, these values determining a lot. It can be anywhere from how much XP each skill gets to how the game is reviewed once released. You also have research and bug. Research points are what you're able to spend to level up skills and get new gaming topics as well as other developments. Bugs are what occur naturally throughout development. Once the game is finished, you're also given an opportunity to wait before finalizing it. During this time, you work out bugs, but also accrue additional points in creative and technology. Once the game is finished, it will be rated by four different publications, and based on how well the game rates, you'll gain sales as well as fans. It's fairly basic stuff. But where it gets interesting is the topics and genres. So obviously topics like fantasy, sci-fi, military, etc. are really good if you want to make RPGs or action games. But what if I want to make a hospital RPG for the DS? Well, you can, but it may not do well. So the game will obviously favor generic genre and topic mashups, but sometimes you can get away with making some odd ones. In one of my playthroughs, I made a basic graphic PC cooking sim called Good Soup, and it did surprisingly well. But if I made something like a transport sim, a game type we are all familiar with, it would sell poorly. The game can be formulaic at times, but I was quite surprised with how much I got punished when trying to make dumb random games for the sake of it. Yes, there are points where weird mashups might do well, there's like a little marketing system, but I was never able to accurately utilize it. So yes, money and sales are a big deal, obviously, but in a very interesting way. Once you hit your first million in your garage, you'll get a notification asking if you want to upgrade to a larger office. In my first go, after I got to 2 mil, I did it right away. Here, you're able to finally train skills and also hire folk to help you. Seems fairly straightforward, right? Yes, but I actually had such a problem managing money that I kept losing and losing and eventually had to go bankrupt. And you know what? I liked it! It was a nice way of teaching me to learn from my mistakes. So when you start a new save, the game will actually ask you if you would like to retain your hints from previous sessions. This means you'll be told where to allocate time and energy on projects to make them more successful. For my second run, I decided to spend all my time researching topics, doing contracts, a feature that allows you to gain money and research points on the side and get two successful gains before moving on. So I eventually got to my next business with well over 4 million and a better idea on how to manage my workflow. I also spent a lot more time training people and even the smallest increase in skills helped me out tremendously. After hiring on two people, I found the best workflow was work on game, work on contracts during sales, do training, send my workers on holiday, then do training for myself while waiting for them to return, then rinse and repeat. I had a few hiccups from time to time, but honestly, it worked great. I ended up ending my session on Kill of Zone 3, which of course I did, and honestly, it did as well as the real Kill of Zone 3. But yes, I still love Game Dev Tycoon. Despite it being well over 10 years old now, it is still the best game development sim out there. If you've never played this gym, I highly recommend picking it up on Steam, mobile, or even on Switch. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you'd like to see this kind of content or even longer form videos, please be sure to subscribe, and if you want to help me out in any way, I also have a Patreon. I'll see you all in the next video.